Testing, testing. Um, okay. Today's scripture is Acts 3, chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. At 3 in the afternoon, now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those who those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, Look at us. So, so the man gave, him, gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles become, became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Thank you, Martin. And today we have uh, Reverend Susanna Kong to uh, minister God's word to us. Uh, Reverend Kong is a, is a longtime friend of our church. Uh, she's the senior pastor of Evangel Christian Church in Taiwan. And also, she serves on the mission committee at, uh, at EFCC together with Pastor KK. Uh, so she has a, a, a heart for, for a mission, and uh, she'll bring God's word to us today. Reverend Kong, please. Good morning, brothers and sisters. It was such a good uh, opportunity to come here to worship with you all. Yes, as Vincent has said, uh, actually Vincent has been a long-time friend of mine, as, as well as Joseph, uh, because we, we were in the same church many years ago when I was still very, very young. <laughs> uh, I'm still young uh, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, Thank you very much for inviting me to share uh, God's word with you. And especially uh, thank you for inviting me to join you for the lunch last Sunday uh, to celebrate IC's 32nd anniversary. Uh, our church is quite new because I think we are, uh, my church is the newest and the youngest uh, EFCC church uh, uh, because we just founded seven years, uh, less than seven years ago. So next year, um, in May, we will celebrate our seventh anniversary, and I've invited Pastor KK to preach on that day, <laughs> that Sunday. So you are uh, you are also welcome to join us uh, for the celebration. Huh? Um, uh, actually, uh, I've quite a uh, quite a few friends in IC, uh, apart from Vincent and Joseph. Uh, we also I also know uh, Judy and Alice. Huh? Uh, in last September, actually Judy, Pastor KK, and I um, served as Cantonese tutors for more than 120 mainland year one students in a local church in Hong Kong. Um, since then, uh, Vincent uh, has kindly offered English coaching sessions to a few students of that university. I really appreciate Vincent's help and care for the students. And then after the Cantonese uh, class, uh, Alice, Pastor KK, and I, we set off for a mission trip to UK and France. Yeah, I think you, you all know that, huh? Uh, we all had a good time there. Huh? Um, also, uh, I, I originally thought it, it was a, a secret, but actually you all know. Uh, just Vincent has said, KK and I are now serving in the denom denomination's mission development group. Uh, and the, which is a, a very important task force of HKOMB, Bodo Taiwei, a mission um, uh, uh, department of 
the denomination. And KK has contributed a lot to both local and overseas cross-cultural missions. So um, uh, I think you should all be very proud of your pastor. <laughs> yeah. Now let's come back to our scripture today. Uh, let me ask you a question first. Um, how many of you have ever written your own testimony and shared in public? Please raise your hand if you had. Yeah, great. Yeah. Uh, how long was your testimony? A long passage or just a few sentences? Uh, uh, maybe uh, a little bit. <laughs> uh, maybe shorter, uh, about the same size of this, uh, the verses we, we read together. Uh, do you remember how you turned to Christ? Do you have a miraculous experience then? Maybe you, have, uh, you can spend some time to think about it. Huh? Now today we come across the testimony of, of a lame beggar whose encounter with Christ was very strange but also very amazing. Huh? Now let us go into details of the salvation story of this beggar. Now, when you're about to write your testimony, I think the church elders or Pastor KK um, may have taught you the three-point approach, right? That is, number one, before. What your life was like before you surrendered to Christ. And then number two, how. How do you come to salvation in Jesus? And then number three, since. How has your life in Christ made a difference since your conversion? So we'll follow this three-point outline to see how this lame man was transformed. Now let us look at the testimony of the lame beggar. How was his life before conversion? The verse 2 to 5 uh, said that, Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gates called Beautiful. where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Now from the scriptures, we can see that this lame beggar's disability was inborn, right? He was lame from birth. And he was taken to the temple gates by someone else every day to beg for his daily need outside the temple court. Now many people may have seen him, but what they could give him to this what they could give to this poor man was no more than a penny. He had never been allowed to go into the temple. What he could do was to keep begging outside the temple for his life and never had the opportunity to go to worship God inside the temple. We can just imagine this man was a man of despair, struggling for existence only, right? And then how, how he came to Christ and how his life, how was his life after conversion? Now from verse 6 to 10, it was written that Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what do I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he held him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at a temple, at a temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Now, there is a Chinese song the lyrics of which is from verse 6 to 9. Does anybody know this song? Do you know how to sing it? Anyone? No. Okay. 
Joseph, do you know how to sing this song? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> uh, um, now I can sing a, a, a few for you. Huh? But it's in Cantonese. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah, Oh, Michelle noted. <laughs> yes, it's quite familiar, right? Uh, yeah, it's like a good song. Uh, uh, it is written from this uh, verse 6 to 9. Huh? Now, I think the lame beggar had an extraordinary experience that you and I would never have. Uh, what, uh, when he was expecting Peter and John to give him money, they told him, silver or gold, I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. And then what they did have was Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and they ordered him to walk. Now, frankly speaking, Many people may think this ridiculous and nonsense. However, this lame beggar responded with obedience. He had a pure faith in Jesus Christ, and with the help of Peter, he was surely surprised to find himself totally recovered from his inborn illness. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. He even gained access to the temple he go into the temple courts to worship God. And he was now full of joy, walking and jumping and praising God. You can see his life was totally transformed. He was transformed from a man of despair to a man of hope. And his change was so dramatic that people around were stunned by his transformation. Brothers and sisters, can you still remember that particular moment of your encounter with Christ? Did you feel the same as this lame man? I want to share with you the testimony of a Christian who lives in mainland China. About 10 months ago, this lady was first referred to me by a Christian organization. And then I, I, I called her on the phone. Um, I, can, I could feel the sadness in, his, in her heart. And then I invited her to come to see me in church the next day. As soon as she sat down in, in my office, she began to cry and told me how she has been betrayed by and hurt by her husband. No matter how much love and effort she had uh, paid for the family, she was mistreated and even sued by her husband. She fell into extreme distress and hopelessness. I share with her, with her the reality of sin, the consequences of sinning, and the love and redemption of Jesus Christ. I encouraged her to accept Christ and let Jesus take charge of her life in the future. She responded, positively and invited Jesus to be her savior and Lord. Immediately, she felt greatly relieved from her sins and the love of Jesus. She began to join our worship service on the Sunday that followed until she returned to her hometown in, mainland, in the mainland. Every time I called her on the phone after her conversion, I could feel the joy and thankfulness in her heart. And every Sunday, she wore a smile on her face. Why was such a big change in the lives of the lame beggar, as well as this uh, sister? What is the turning point for this drastic change? Uh, we can find out the answer from the following four verses. Verse 1, 4, 6, and 7 can give us the 
the answer for the change of this lame beggar and the sister. Now you know, uh, the devoted Jews will go regularly to the temple to pray three times a day, one at night in the morning, and then 12 at <clears throat> 12 noon and 3 p.m. That means many people should have seen the lame man at the temple gates. But in fact, no one truly saw his real need. They just ignore him. But on the other hand, Peter and John not only saw him, but also took him into their hearts. They saw not only his physical need to be healed, but also his spiritual need, which only Jesus could satisfy. Then they performed a simple but amazing miracle in the name of Jesus to cause the lame beggar to walk. Now, did any one of you turn to Christ because someone asked you to look at him or look at her? Is, is the, did anyone have this experience? I think no. Huh? If someone did this to you, you might think mm, he or she probably uh, he is probably insane right or maybe you go away immediately yeah peter and john could see what others could not see others only see only saw his physical needs such as food money or need to be healed but the two apostles could see his spiritual need that is his soul needed to be saved from eternal death now, Peter and John's true seeing, that is, to see the beggar through God's lens, drove them to bring Jesus into the beggar's life, thus resulting in his total transformation. Now, when the two apostles performed the miracle, I guess they must have also in mind Jesus' great commandment before he ascended to heaven in the book of Matthew, and what Jesus has said in Acts chapter 1. In the book of Matthew, chapter 28, it is said that Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And then in Acts chapter 1, verse 7 and 9, he said to the apostles, Jesus said to the, to the apostles, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The apostles knew clearly it's with the authority of Jesus that they could heal the lame man. Brothers and sisters, can we always see the needy and their real needs, or we just ignore them or see their superficial needs? Are you hesitated to help those who are in need because you think uh, you don't have the ability to help? I want to share two experiences of mine. Uh, early in the year 2020, when the COVID-19 pandemic just broke out, I had a walk in Chai Wan Park after lunch one day. And then I, I saw two Indian ladies sitting on the ground in a corner of the park. Then I went straight to them and asked, do you have facial mask for all your family members? And then they, say, they said, no, we don't have. And I immediately promised to give them some and invited them to come to my church. Since then, the family and I became friends. We exchanged our phone numbers, and then they served as volunteers uh, of our church for several times. Uh, they even sent the free kids to join our Awana children's team. We offered Chinese and Cantonese classes uh, to, to the family and uh, their friends to help them cope with their daily needs. 
uh, I also visited um, uh, their home with my uh, deacon. Uh, we also organized an evangelistic event before the Moon Festival. Uh, uh, this is the evangelistic event. Uh, both friends from India and students from mainland China had the opportunity to hear the good news of Jesus. I really saw those in need and responded accordingly. Another experience then, five months ago, we offered a Cantonese class for a group of Pakistani ladies. Uh, and then in the second last lesson, the only student of that class uh, that day told us that for the past one year, she has been scared by a nightmare and she could hardly sleep at night. She also told us the tragedy that her family has faced over the past three years, in which her parents and two children have passed away one by one. The only surviving little daughter is paralyzed and can only live with the help of respiratory equipment. I was then so moved by the Holy Spirit to pray for this lady, but I was hesitant to do so because she was a, a Muslim. Meanwhile, I also doubt if my prayer was powerful enough to help her. But at last, I still took courage to ask her to ask for her per uh, permission to pray for her. And then one week later, I asked if she can uh, she could sleep. Uh, well at night. She told us with joy that after we prayed for her, she was no longer plagued by the nightmare. Is it wonderful? This special experience of her has paved the way for our home visit to celebrate the birthday of her daughter. Uh, this is the lady. Huh? We visited her home and celebrate the birthday with, of her daughter. And we also prayed for the whole family. I know it's not by my power, but the authority of Jesus that the lady could get over from the year long nightmare. Uh, we, are, uh, we were uh, in her home celebrating the birthday of her little uh, daughter. Uh, she she could only sleep, uh, stay on the bed. Uh, cannot uh, she cannot walk any any anymore. Uh, another example, I think we all know them. The Ang Anglo Scottish Protestant Protestant missionary Robert Morrison, uh, who was also the first missionary to China. Um, before sh he set off for China, someone challenged him. Don't you think you can change China? And then Robert Morrison replied, I can't, but my Lord can. Yes, brothers and sisters, we serve our Lord and preach the gospel with the power of God, but not by our own capability, just as Peter and John healed the lame beggar by the power of Jesus. Do you have faith and trust in Jesus? Now from the conversion story of the lame beggar, I'd like to invite you to reflect on the following three types of seeing. Firstly, can you see the real need of others? Do you see the need of your brothers and sisters in church? I'm so thankful for IC huh, because we can share uh, uh, in the uh, our sharing is part of the uh, worship so that we can know the needs of brothers and sisters and also we can pray uh, for them, huh, pray for each other. Can you also see the need of your neighbors? Huh? Your neighbors? Do you see also the needs of those in the community of your church? I'm glad to know that I see sees the need of the market, uh, the need the need to preach to the marketplace and Mandarin speaking people. Pastor KK has shared with me huh, why uh, you moved 
from Hang Fa Chun to Wan Chai because you see uh, the need of a uh, well, many marketplace people and also Mandarin speak, uh, speaking people. My churches also uh, have a mission to preach to the Mandarin speaking people. Huh? Number two, do you always invite others to see the power of God? Do you remember when you last preached to an unbeliever? To how many people have you shared the good news? Are you passionate to share the gospel with others? Now, I, I had another testimony which, is, which happened a month ago. On a Monday, you know, it's the holiday of pastors. Uh, usually, we, we have day off on Monday. Huh? And then on that Monday morning, I sat down on a bench somewhere in the park near my home, uh, ready to enjoy my coffee and read the Bible with my mobile phone. But suddenly, an old man came by and sat opposite to me. I struggled for a while. Should I go to him? Or should I stay here and enjoy my coffee and reading my uh, Bible? <laughs> I struggled for a while. But at last, I went to sit next to him and chatted with him. Step by step, I managed to preach the good news to him. Though he didn't accept Christ, but I was still happy because I've submitted myself to the guidance of the Spirit. This is the man, huh? the old man. Huh? We talk a lot, huh? and, but he didn't accept Christ at the time. Huh? But uh, I'll keep praying for him. Huh? I sat here, and then he came to sit opposite to me. <laughs> yeah. And number three, can other people see that your life has been transformed by Jesus? Now, some Christians once said to me, uh, when they told their friends or colleagues that he or she was a believer of Christ, the friends or colleagues were so shocked by the news. And then I also heard some Christians say, they were asked by some, someone they didn't know well whether he or she was a Christian because their life was so different from others. Uh, brothers and sisters, which type of Christian are we belong to? Now, to conclude my sermon, I'd like to suggest and encourage you to take free actions as your response to God's word this morning. Number one, to care for others through God's lens. To care those around you through God's lens so that we can see the need of the soul. And number two, to step out of our comfort zone to share the gospel with others whenever you have the chance. Just as uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2 said, Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. And number three, to surrender your life to Jesus so that your life can be a radiant manifestation of Christ. Let us pray. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins on the cross. Thank you for entrusting us with this glorious job to share the gospel with others who are not yet of your ship hand. Today I pray that your Spirit will move in our hearts, draw us closer to you, and give us strength to surrender wholeheartedly to your will. <clears throat> Lord, please open our eyes so that we can see what you want us to see. I also pray that brothers and sisters of IC will glorify your name further, see your glory, and enjoy your blessings. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.